darkness deep Now see the light of morning The mighty God, the Prince of Peace A child to us is born Behold the Lamb of God Who takes away our sin Behold the Lamb of God, the life and light of men. Behold the Lamb of God, who died and rose again. Behold the Lamb of God, who comes to take away our Wanderers in the wilderness Oh, hear a voice is crying Prepare the way, make straight the paths Your King has come to die Behold the Lamb of God Who takes away our sin Behold the Lamb of God The life and light of men Behold the Lamb of God Who died and rose again Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. Son of God. Good morning, church. How are you feeling today? Good. I hope you've had a meaningful Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I want to say thank you to Dan and Jess, who opened us with music this morning. Will you show your appreciation for... We have so many musicians in this congregation, and you're going to see many of them featured today. This is one of the highlights of the year for many of us in the church. This is called the Hanging of the Green Service. And uh, I wonder if you've ever been to one before. If this is your first one, let me tell you what to expect. Uh, You're going to see an intergenerational church on display. People from every age and stage across our congregation are going to be involved in helping to adorn the sanctuary with beauty. And and some of you might be wondering, well, why in the world would you dedicate an entire service to something like this? 
Well, we believe uh, that the, the decor, the items are put here on purpose to awaken our imaginations about some other aspect of Jesus, about God, the Holy Spirit, that we would otherwise forget on our own. And so our spaces speak for us even when we fail to have the vocabulary uh, to remember all the wonderful things about who God is and what God is up to. Um, so you're, gonna, you're in for a treat. And, and this is a short worship service. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for you, uh, to those of you who have gathered online today. If you uh, are gathered and you have prayer concerns, uh, we want to invite you to put those in the chat. Register your attendance with us online. You can always subscribe and hit that little bell on YouTube. It'll give you um, a notification on your phone or your device uh, whenever we go live with worship services or other talks like this. Uh, I do remind you that every week when we gather, we gather to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world through worship through small groups, through outreach to our community and love. And we indeed believe that love lives here. Amen? It's a great thing. Now, if you're here for the first time or the next time, we would love for you to sign in. There's a pad at the end of your row. If you haven't yet grabbed that, I want you to uh, go ahead and grab it, sign in, and then pass it down the row. This is a great way to register your attendance this morning and for us to be in relationship with one another. Um, one other note by way of announcement. If you have not yet uh, put on your calendars for December 3rd, that's next Saturday, Act of Congress is going to be here. Y'all, they are in high demand all across the city uh, and really around the globe. They are ambassadors uh, for, for the for the United States representing music all around the globe, and we have the treat of hosting them here. Now, it is a free concert. As you come in, there will be a place for you to uh, to make some donations. We would love for you to, to give freely, um, but do know that it is a concert that is for free. It starts at 6 p.m. Uh, doors will open about 5.30, and uh, those seats in here will go fast, so make sure that you are, uh, are on time. It'll be a great treat to kick off the holidays uh, together. All right, so as you're able, I want to invite you uh, to join me in a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this morning and for the ability to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that you will speak loudly to us through everything that is said done, spoken, sung, and enacted today. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and all God's people said together, amen.
friends, we have an opening litany that will be on the screens. I want to invite you to join me by saying together the words that are in large print. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the king? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the eternal Christ? With garlands of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of our Savior with wreaths of holly and ivy, telling of his passion, death, and resurrection? How shall we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Son of God by hearing again the words of the prophets who foretold the saving work of God? For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might through him be saved. Glory to God in the highest. As you're able, I want to invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. you to hear these words from Jeremiah chapter 33 verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. We've officially begun the church season of Advent. The word Advent means coming or arrival. We are along the fresh awareness of the presence of Jesus. When Jesus comes into our lives, hope is born. Hope is born even in the most difficult times possible. Like Jeremiah's people of Israel, we may find ourselves asking, God, when will we experience the righteousness and safety you promised? There have always been voices of hope, even in the times of injustice, prejudice, and despair. Sometimes those voices are too faint for us to hear. Other times we simply choose not to listen. This year, let's listen for God's hope. Let's break the silence with our own voices as well. We light this candle to illuminate the hope of the world. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Please join me as we pray together. The words are also on the screen. God of hope, restore our faith in you. May justice spring up within us today and always. Thank you for Jesus, who leads us into salvation. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Anticipation. Let's pass the peace of Christ to each other here in, our, in this room, in this sanctuary, and to our friends at home. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 2. The poinsettia is a beautiful plant, and is often referred to as the flower of the holy night. A Mexican legend tells us of a time when it was custom to bring a gift for the Christ child to the creche in the church on Christmas Eve. People brought many rare and beautiful things. A young boy, too poor to bring a gift, knelt in the snow outside the church to pray, for he would not enter without a gift for the child. When he stood, he found in the place where he had knelt a beautiful plant with crimson leaves and yellow flowers. The crown of yellow flowers reminds us of him who was born the infant king. The red leaves foreshadow the cruel cross that lay ahead for the king of glory. 
He picked a stalk and presented it as his gift. had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to another, Let us go off to Bethlehem and see what thing has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. Luke two fifteen and 16. The best known Christmas decoration tradition is the nativity or crutch the scene of Bethlehem where the birth took place. There was a stable filled with animals, shepherds, and angels. Mary and Joseph watched in wonder as visitors came searching for their child, baby Jesus. This Advent season, we set the scene as a reminder of God's gift to us. And we continue in worship. We give our gifts of time, talents, and finances for God's glory. Let's live generously. During the final verse of Away in a Manger, our children are invited forward for a special children's moment with Miss Karen.
ready. They are ready. Okay, those of you who have already done some reading and some hanging and placing this morning have done a, oh, it made me have like goosebumps. And I get, to, I get to see some more. You know what, that time it is, it is really exciting time, right? <gasps> Guess what I have? What do you think's in here? Ooh, ooh, chocolate, okay. Could be chocolate, nothing? Oh, that would be really sad. Huh? What else? What else could be here? Oh, bo yeah. ooh, hot cocoa. I hope it's the powder and not the whole, like, hot cocoa mix in there, like the whole milk and everything. Well, you know what, Jenny? I would love to open it, but you know what? It's not Christmas. Oh, I'm going to have to wait. You can't. I'm going to have to. I know it's really hard. Oh, but Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. I've got to, I have to wait. I have, do you like to wait? Do you like to wait? Obviously, Charlie does not like to wait. Do you like to wait, Finn? No, 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 y'all don't like to wait, but guess what? You like to wait. Okay, McKenna likes to wait. We're going to make her wait. I guess we'll have to wait and find out later on, later in the season, what's in the box. Right now, we have to wait. It's like, like a mystery show. Okay. Well, yeah, it could be Sunday. We got a ways to go during Advent, okay? We're waiting for, why are we waiting? Christmas. We're waiting for Christmas. What happens at Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday. So we're going to have to wait and enjoy all of this time so that we can celebrate Jesus' birthday. And you know what? To help you, and I'm going to pass these out, these are Advent calendars. And you know what? We were talking about them in Sunday school. And guess what? This is going to help you with your waiting. Because, like, I looked at day one while we were doing Sunday school, and it said something really sweet. It says, take a goodie to someone who has to work on Christmas Day. And we were talking about who works on Christmas Day. So you're going to get these um, today. Now, you've got to wait until December 1st. Okay, so you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. But it's going to help you with your waiting during this time of Advent. Okay? So I'm ready to see. Hold on, Charlie. I am, I will give you one. I am, I am going to, uh, I am ready to see what the Quest kids are going to be doing. So let's pray so we can see what they're going to do. Can you pray? Quest, can we, give me my box. Can you pray with me? Dear God, help me be patient and to wait for Christmas and to know Jesus is the reason for the season. We love you. Amen. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Hello? Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> um, families around the world will put up evergreen trees and adorn them with lights and decorations. The Chrismon tree is used to tell the story of salvation. The Chrismon tree points our eyes to the Savior just as its shape points to heaven above. The sparkling lights remind us of the stars over Bethlehem, and the shiny decorations remind us of the precious gift of a tiny babe. Modern churches decorate their trees with chrismons. The word chrismon is a combination of the word Christ and monogram. Therefore, it is a monogram of Christ. Each chrismon is a Christ-centered ornament that is a symbol of Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection for all Christians. The ornaments are white and gold to symbolize the purity of Christ and his kingship. First, we have the manger. 
The, the night that Jesus was born, the shepherds ran to see the baby. The baby was born in a manger, as the angels and the prophets foretold. The manger reminds us of Christ's humble birth. Next we have the fish. Jesus called the fishermen to come and follow him. In the same way, the fish reminds us that Jesus calls each of us to be fishers of men. We are all to call others to follow Christ. Next we have the shell. The shell is a symbol of our baptism. The shell comes from the sea to remind us that we were baptized with water into the family of God. Next we have the dove. Glory to God and peace on earth is the angel song. The dove is a sign of peace. The prince of peace is Jesus, sent to us from God above. Next we have the butterfly. A caterpillar changes to become a beautiful butterfly. In the same way, Jesus changes us and makes us a new creation. This new life is a gift from God, more beautiful than all his creations. Next we have the harp. Psalms 150, 1 through 3, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. The harp reminds us always to praise God with song and action. Next we have the lamb. Behold the lamb of God, John said when he saw Jesus. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The lamb reminds us that Jesus came to be a sacrifice for our sin. Next we have the crown. The crown is placed on the very top of the tree, representing Christ above all others. Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him.
As you have seen this space adorned, I wonder if you will put some similar things in your own home in coming days. Some of you have already done just that. Has anyone put a Christmas tree up? Yeah? Anybody have some lights, perhaps? Some of you are going to have a nativity that's a, fam a family heirloom that will be placed out. My hope and prayer for you this Advent season is that it will not just be a decorative, beautiful thing in a sanctuary like this. It will not just be a ritual in your own home that you do that just feels nice, but that every action, every item that we place out will awaken our hopes, will awaken our imaginations to the very real presence of Christ in our own lives and in our community. And when that begins to take shape, our world begins to embody the fullness of Christ in a more meaningful way than we can imagine. I'm grateful that you've chosen to be here today during this Hanging of the Green service. Uh, I hope it's been a meaningful time for you. There will be more Advent songs to sing in coming weeks, and we hope that you'll make it a priority to be with us in person or online. Friends, we have a closing uh, benediction that will be offered on the screens here. I invite you to join me as we pray together. As we have adorned this place of worship, let our hearts shine with your everlasting light. Your word, O oh God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Christmas is about your glory. Each time we see these symbols, may we reflect on your gift of the babe of Bethlehem. As we celebrate his birth, we come with expectation. We come with hope. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, our long-awaited Messiah. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. The words are on your screen. As you're able, will you stand as we sing our praise to God?